And we can, um, this is also being recorded, so um, maybe we can get started now. Uh, and then if anyone misses it, we can send them the recording. Also, this is being recorded, so anyone doesn't want to be on camera, then <laughs> feel free to turn your camera off. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I will share my screen. Uh, up. Okay, can you see it? Okay, yeah, just perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, uh, just a moment. Okay, okay. So, thank you for joining us today and welcome to France. My name is Valentina. I'm CIE program assistant in REN. I have been working for CIE for five years three years right now, and I have been living in Ren for the last five years. So I do know the city um, very well, I think. <laughs> and I work with uh, Daniel, Daniel Odas, who is a center director, and he has worked at CIE for a long period, I think, uh, since, 2007, so he has a lot of experience with these exchange programs. So here are some reasons for you or your son and daughter to go to REN as their next study abroad destination. First of all, REN is not a typical destination because when, generally speaking, when people think about France, they think about Paris or other big cities, and REN is a little known city, which is why they have a unique experience because they will benefit from a French and Breton experience. Ren is also a less touristy city, which means that they will be fully immersed in the French language because they will sign a language pledge at the very beginning. They will sign a document, which is a commitment to speak and um, learn French as much as possible during the program. They also will live with a host family, a French host family, which allows, uh, which is a situation that allows them to practice their French language on a daily basis and to gain a more deeper uh, cultural knowledge. Also, all program activities and discussions are conducted in French. So as you can imagine, they, are, they will be fully immersed in the, in the language and in the host city. Also, uh, of course, the French and the Breton gastronomy is a, an important component of the program because your uh, sons and daughters will have the opportunity to taste a lot, a lot of delicious food. So it's something that you cannot miss, they cannot miss at all. And here are some pictures of Ren. In the bottom, we can find the well-known half timbered houses, which are um, part of the charm of the city. And uh, the Ren population is a young population, which means that there is a festive atmosphere thanks to the many cultural events that take place in the, uh, all over the year, and especially during summer. And is also a city when you can relax and uh, laid back <laughs> because you can spend time in uh, some green spaces, for example, the Tabor Parks, which is one of the most famous parks in, uh, in Ren. Uh, concerning the public transportation in Ren, everybody uses public transportation, which means that it's easy and safe to, to navigate in Ren. 
and uh, has a living ran right now, I really think that it's the perfect blend of city and small town life. Concerning the schedule uh, for, for our program, we can say that students have breakfast at their own stay, and then they will have three hours per day of French classes. In the afternoon, they will have an activity called community conversation or Ose le Francais, which means that your sons and daughter will be in the situation, will be in, uh, will need to, to practice their French skills with locals. And then they will participate in daily cultural activities, which are always correlated with the um, learning outcome of the French class. And otherwise, they will have some free time to explore the city and get to know with, the, with other program peers. On weekends, we'll plan some excursions in order to know the region. And they will get uh, a chance to know their host family um, especially during dinner time or on Sundays, for example. And here are an example of uh, language learning setting. We, our students are placed by level intermediate to advanced. So we do not offer the beginner level, the beginning level. And uh, um, our local teachers are used to work with us. They are uh, a lot of experience teaching French as a foreign language, and they do know very well American participants. They will work in small groups, which allows them to participate as much as possible in, uh, in French. And as I said before, every cultural activity is um, correlated with the learning outcome of the French class. And here are some examples of the community conversations, which are activities that students um, do in pairs or in group, in small groups. And it consists of conversations with locals around some different teams. And they are usually fun uh, because they are uh, conducted with and by program leaders who are English, French teachers who accompany students during the whole program. And uh, some examples of uh, cultural activities. So um, as I said before, every activity has a learning outcome. So for example, the first week of the program, our students are learning about the host city and the host family and their peers from the program. So for example, we would like to organize a cooking workshop so they can familiarize with the French gastronomy. And for the second week of the program, we, they will learn about arts. And that's why we will organize a museum visit and a street art workshop, which is something that is uh, really appreciated from, uh, for our students. And um, uh, they also will be able to enjoy the kayak day <laughs> because that will allow them to have another perspective of the host city. Concerning the excursions, we would like to organize a daily excursion in um, a one day excursion to a UNESCO site, the Mont Saint Michel and a overnight excursion in the southern coast of Brittany, which, uh, which usually offers uh, beautiful landscapes right in front of the sea. So it's something that we cannot miss. And 
Okay, the best part of the program, in my opinion, are the host families because uh, it's an important component of our program because our students will have the chance to practice French language on a daily basis and they will uh, deepen their knowledge about local culture. Each student will have their own bedroom and the host family will provide breakfast and dinner during weekdays and all weekend meals. So they are uh, all set for, uh, for the meals. And also you should know that our host families are different because they have different social backgrounds, but everybody is passionate about international exchange and they have a lot of experience with hosting our students. And they will do their best to host uh, warmly your, uh, your sons and daughters. And yeah, for if you want to have a more, um, a, more a student point of view, you may check our program's blog or you can follow us on the Instagram because you can see what we, uh, what activities we um, organized last year and you will learn more about the OCT. And here are some reminders, and I would love uh, for Adriana to help me with that, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, so if uh, your student applies by December 1st, they'll automatically be entered in to win a free flight, a chance to win a free flight. So our um, last year's free flight winner went to Berlin, Germany. That's pretty exciting. Um, and then if they can't apply by December 1st, I know that deadline's coming up pretty quickly. The final uh, application and scholarship deadline is January 18th. Um, and then if they have an alumni in their, at their school um, or know somebody who's gone uh, abroad with CIE before, they can apply using an alumni link and that'll save them $200 off. Um, yeah, you can also contact us and. I can probably find an alumni link that you can use to apply <laughs> through as well. We have a few. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. And I think that's it. So thank you very much for listening. And I will uh, have time for your questions. We will have time for your questions. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for us? Yeah, I was just curious um, <clears throat> for the homestays. Um, to what extent um, are you um, placed independently, like without other Americans in the homestay? You know, one. You know, it's just individually versus a, a family that might host more than one student. <clears throat> Yeah, for the summer program, we host uh, some important groups of students. So actually, we uh, we place students, uh, two students or three students with the same host family. But uh, we have um, an agreement with our host families, which is that they should uh, practice and talk in French as much as possible and. Uh, they will have, everybody will have a, an amount, a good amount of time to speak with their host family. And since they will have individual bedrooms, it's, it will be difficult for the students to practice um, English when uh, they are in the bedroom because they will be in individual bedrooms. And uh, from experience, we can say that sometimes us families find that um, it's useful to have more than one student because sometimes we have just single woman and women, sorry. And uh, it's easier to, to do a conversation, to have a conversation with more than one student because sometimes students are also shy. They are hesitant. They do not are, they, they aren't um, at easy at the very beginning with the host family. So it's easier to be two or three students with the same host family. So if they need to back up or help the other students, 
everybody will feel um, at easy, I think. Mm -hmm. And our us families think so <laughs> as well. Okay. Yeah, no, just because I find sometimes, you know, the less you deal with expats and the more you are with locals, the better chances of actually, you know, having yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. learning the French yeah. and something about the culture and the people. Of course. And honestly, we are always amazed by the progress of our students because in four weeks, they, they do amazing progress in French. And that's also because of the host family situation, living situation, because they really spend time with their host family. And we encourage uh, our students to uh, spend as much time as possible uh, talking uh, with their host family in order to get to know each other and learn more about the host culture. So honestly, we are always amazed by all the progress that our students make every summer. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. And is there any sort of just curious, um, any real distinction between the two sessions or not really? They're sort of no, 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 no. kind of right yeah, of the program. Okay. No, no, they are the same, <laughs> practically the same. We do the same cultural activities, the same excursions, and mm -hmm. we always have the same host families as well. So no, nothing's different. Okay. Great. Thanks. <clears throat> and so it's always just more of that. In the morning is the is the language, and then the afternoon is the activity, yeah. um, or free time, I guess. Right? Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. You got right. it. <laughs> and do you recommend sort of in terms of right, go ahead. Um, applying um, sort of just spaces? Like, is there a certain date you recommend that? I mean, obviously there's the actual official deadline, <laughs> but is there sort of a tendency for things to fill up, like to get it in by a certain point in time? Uh, I really recommend, day -day, you yeah, know, right? is your student applying for a scholarship? No, most likely not. Okay, um, then I would just say by, by January 18th. Okay. okay. Or really ideally December 1st for the free flight oh, raffle, but um, okay. yeah, um, but if that's not possible, then January 18th. Okay. And then the, there was, I know for Ren, there's the language assessment, right? To make sure that <clears throat> um, she's, you know, has sufficient sort of proficiency um, before, you know, or should she look at like Paris or Toulouse or, and so how does that assessment work or how is that administered and sort of the timing of that? They, um, they do have to have one year of high school learning to go on our French programs. Um, and they'll also take a stamp assessment language test before they go on program, uh, just to put them on in different specific classes, classes, depending on their level. I don't know if you can speak any more to that, Valentina. Yeah, that's it. And um, sometimes from past experiences, we had, we host some students with a lower level, uh, beginner level. And it was kind of a difficult for them because all the component of the programs are in of the program are in French. So it was kind of hard for them to bet, to integrate uh, actively integrate in the um, in the activities. But honestly, they did it. And I just would like to uh, to mention that once we have the results of the stamp test, we can see if your daughter is mm, able <laughs> to participate in our program. And we can also contact you and maybe suggest to look for Paris and Toulouse. The problem is that we have these results uh, late in, um, in the year. I mean, I don't know, March maybe, oh, April, wow. and it will be difficult at the time to change the program. 
Uh, otherwise, you can. Uh, how many years of French does your daughter have? She has three years. Um, oh, okay. You know, high school, fine, yeah. I think. Yeah, I just I think we've had a little bit of transition during um, like last year, her French teacher um, one left, they had a replacement come in, you know, and so there's been a little bit of turnover in terms of teaching staff. And then with, I know, and so part of it was during COVID. So that, you know, the online tra language training is never quite as good as when you're doing it yeah, in a classroom. Yeah. So so I, I think she should probably be fine, but I'm just curious in terms of, you know, just, you know, when, at what point do we find out whether she has sufficient proficiency or not? Um, and then if that test is done in March, I guess, is that online or? Yeah, yeah, the test is online. Okay. And then after that point, based on the result, you would determine whether there was space in a different, in another city like Paris or Toulouse or, or how does that work? We... Or, or, assuming there's space. Yeah, yeah. Last year we tried to do that for three or four students because they didn't have they didn't have the uh, required level. So mm -hmm. we asked if they could be moved on another program, but mm -hmm. actually it was a little bit difficult because of the uh, late turns. And uh, in the end, we were able to host them and we, because our teachers can adapt their lesson plans to mm -hmm. the level. So we can, for example, create a intermediate low level, intermediate high level and advanced mm -hmm. level. So mm -hmm. that's, honestly, that's, um, that could be a solution, I mean, so don't okay, worry. Yeah, just to, yeah. I mean, yeah. ideally, obviously, she would come for the language immersion, but just wanted to know, you know, is there a plan B just in case? If yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, our teachers, honestly, our teachers can adapt their lesson plans, and we usually, honestly, we usually have uh, three levels: intermediate, mm -hmm. low, intermediate, high, and advanced for the advanced mm -hmm. <laughs> students. Right. So yeah, just uh, I'm looking at the chat. So yeah, the different skill, uh, those different skill levels of how you group the students in terms of where they're at to cluster them appropriately. Yes, um, yeah. just to, yeah, yeah. Um, and I actually misspoke that they, for the advanced run program, it's two years of high school, high school classes, um, which I know you said your daughter has three, so she would, be okay with that. And then, yeah, for the stamp language assessment, I, uh, they would just, it would just be to gauge which class classes she would be, she would be in with which students and their levels so that they can better learn. So I guess it's sort of um, kind of dependent on where the results of the assessment based on the applicant pool, kind of how it gets broken up in yes. terms of, okay. And then what's the average size for the program? Like in terms of how many total students do you have at any oh. <laughs> during a session, plus or minus average? Okay, for example, last year we had 40 students on session one, if I remember well, and 48 students for session two, which, is, which are high numbers for us because we are a small center and we we were amazed by the numbers of students who chose REN. And so I think that we are between 40 and 45 students per session. Okay, that's great. Just an approximate is fine. Just I have yeah. a sense for how big it is. Okay, thank you. And also about the um, language level, um, we, be, we consider, we try to take into consideration the um, STEM test, the test that they take before arriving in the, in the city, in Rennes, but also uh, during on-site orientation, we, um, we ask students to talk with our teachers individually so they can assess better maybe, but they can assess their uh, uh, speaking skills. 
and they can see if they are effectively in the proper level or if they need to change level because sometimes the stamp test is is actually uh, accurate, but sometimes there can be some differences. So sure. one student who was considered as intermediate based, based on the STEM test was actually at the advanced level and vice versa. Book knowledge versus conversational and right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and also during the first days of the program, we can make some changes. So during classes, our teachers evaluate, assess each student individually, and they can judge if they are at the, at the good level of if they need to, to change. Right. OK, great. Thank so you. Nothing is <laughs> settled uh, before arriving. I mean, we did uh, and we do, <laughs> we usually do a lot of changes once <laughs> students are on site because we can better evaluate them. Perfect, thank you. Oh, right, so um, that was another question I had here, so how long does the application take process take? So once we submit on January 18th, how when do we actually find out whether we've been accepted or not? We will announce scholarship awards by the end of February. So I believe during that time as well as was is when students will be placed in program. Regardless of scholarship, right? That you've been yeah, 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 yeah. We kind of do everything, uh, awarding and placement together. Is it, would you say that their homestay is their primary, you know, time to like spend with like locals or, um, you know, obviously you're out in a bazaar or you're out in a market or something like, but you know, you, you'll talk to strangers, but in terms of really kind of being able to have like conversations with folks, the homestay is probably going to be the primary yeah. source, for that, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. And then also with the um, during the community conversation, they will be able to have small conversation around some topics uh, with locals. Uh, but I think that the primary source of conversation will be with their host families. Okay, great, thank you. I apologize because I know each of your, for each of your cities, you have a separate orientation, but I was just yeah. curious if you don't end up doing the language immersion, is it similar in terms of, are you still doing a homestay with other like Americans or are you in Paris and Toulouse, are you placed separately on your own? Oh, good question. Do you Maybe know anything, Adriana? I think, yeah, it just depends on the program and um, yeah, how, how each local site does it, but um, it's for all language programs, it's they're placed in homestays and then and then it also varies. They could be with, with a, an American student or they could be with two or just by themselves in the homestay. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. I think that the problem for France is the same for all centers which means that our host families are uh, on vacation, um, especially during session two, so July and August. So the problem is that it's hard, it's difficult for us to find host families. And that's why it's, uh, if we have a uh, host family with two bedrooms, we do not hesitate to ask if she can host two students because it's really, hard for us to, um, to find enough host families for all of our students. Uh, for Ren, for example, we started the recruitment process early in October. So, I mean, it was really hard last year. So this year I would like to 
uh, recruit enough host families for students, but uh, be reassured that even though they are placed with other students or just with another student, uh, they will get a chance to, to practice their French on a daily basis and they will, it's up to them if they want to progress. I am sure that they will find time, they will make time to spend with their host families instead of their um, peers. I mean, sometimes even if they are placed um, uh, just by themselves with a homestay, uh, with a host family, sorry, um, they can choose to spend all of their free time with their peers downtown Ren. And so it, it depends. It depends on, um, on each one of them and their objectives for the program, what they would like to be able to do at the end of the program. And I think that if they are motivated enough, they will get every chance <laughs> to speak, to spend time with their host family. And they will, sometimes it's reassuring for the students to be placed with another one because sometimes they are just too shy and right. they, they are afraid, in fact, to speak <laughs> French. <laughs> it's kind of hard. I mean, for me, it's hard to speak in English. And so I can imagine how hard it is for them to speak uh, French. And also they are young. They are very, very young. So sometimes we just need a body system, you know, someone who yeah. can push us uh, out of our comfort zone and say, okay, so I can try. And our host families are actually great because uh, they make sure to give a good amount of time uh, to each student. So for example, they ask, what did you do uh, during the day? And everybody has to answer, you know, there, there will have some time for everybody. Yeah, maybe could you um, share a little bit in terms of your process for screening and, you know, sort of um, selecting families? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I um, generally, I start with the, some flyers, you know, I'm looking for host families, for a group of students, blah, blah, blah. And then I make an appointment at their homestay, at, the, at their house, sorry, and I will meet with them with a um, with a lot of questions because I would like to know them better and would like to know also their expectations in terms of our, our students. For example, for us, there are some um, priorities. So everything that is medical or um, related to food is the utmost priority, the utmost important thing. For example, if one student is allergic to cats, for example, or dogs, we make sure that they are not placed in the own stay who has dogs and cats. Okay. And uh, we, we have a conversation with our host families in order to make sure that they are doing this, not just for the money, because they are, there is a, um, Remuneration. There is, they are paid. Stipend. Stipend. Right. No, your remuneration. Yeah. Correct. Stipend. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, no. Uh, there is Correct. a stipend, <laughs> but we want to make sure that they are not doing this because they need to have a stipend. You know what I mean? I, we really want to trust them that they are doing this because they are really motivated to learn and to meet with other students. And it's usually the, the case because our families have a job. So uh, they do that because they like to host students. They like to have, to meet students from different backgrounds. They like to learn and they would like maybe one day to go to the US, <laughs> who says. And so then we, once we selected all our, uh, our uh, families, uh, we organized a meeting um, online or in person when we explain um, the, the program. So everything that we are going to do during the summer. 
And in the end, uh, we, we will make sure that the placement is appropriate. So we'll uh, have the housing survey from the student and the, um, the questions for, from the family. And we will make sure that uh, an appropriate placement is in place. Okay, I don't know if I answered your question. I think that it's something that no, I yeah. do automatically without thinking a lot about it because it's kind of a routine for me. Uh, but I can reassure you that sometimes I met with some host families who are not, um, who, mm, how can I say that, who didn't have the same expectations as we have and mm -hmm. we don't selectionate them. So it's something that we take really serious into, that we take seriously. Sorry. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Um, and then do sometimes do they have their own children as well? Just curious. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 of course. And sometimes there are animals or children. And even though children are adult, they can visit on weekends, for example. So uh, students will have a chance to meet with the, with the other members of the family. Right, so it doesn't necessarily tend to be like high school students, like they're not own necessarily. We have both uh, with children, without children, with children, but adult, and uh, it's it depends actually. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. We do run background checks on each of the families as well, right, Valentina? Background Sorry. checks. We, oh, oh, of course, yeah, thank you, <laughs> that's it. You can explain maybe background checks because- Yeah, background checks and, and fingerprints, we run all yeah. of that for them and uh, check, checking that each of the homes are suited for each student. They have a desk, a proper, proper sleeping arrangement, all of that. And usually homestays are, um, they come back each year. Is that correct, yeah. Valentina? Yeah. Yeah. And very important for post pandemic, uh, the vaccination, COVID vaccination. I mean, we ask to our students to be vaccinated against COVID. And uh, we ask to our host families to be vaccinated as well because, you know, they are in, they will live together. So we want to make sure to reduce risks of contamination. So it's very important. Self, uh, health, safety, and security are at the are priorities, I think. <laughs> Any other questions? And then I'm just curious <clears throat> for travel. Um, how is that organized? Not you know, say internally, but even once they're in France, that's obviously a lot easier, but <laughs> like even just uh, flying over, is that, or do each of the students come independently and just need to be arrived within a certain window of time? You know, how does that work? I'll speak a little bit to this, Valentina. Yeah. Um, we do offer chaperoned group flights. So um, the student can fly from their local airport to a major hub airport, um, JFK or LAX, and then we'll meet with a chaperone and program leader and group of students and we'll, they'll all fly together to, to their targeted site. And then Valentina, I don't know if you can speak to students who, who don't uh, use the chaperone flights or, or timeline for arrival for that. Yes, sometimes students fly um, with their um, parents or guardians. So sometimes natural parents accompany students on site. I mean, at the local airport or train station, and then they can meet directly with the host family, for example, that's an option. And otherwise, some students arrive uh, independently. And the most important thing is just to inform us 
uh, ahead because we need to check with our host families if they can make sure to um, to greet them at the airport or at the train station, especially if they miss the window that we will give them. So um, both are options. <laughs> we had uh, both each year. Jessica, do you mean program selection? Okay. Yeah, so when you when you start an application, it'll prompt you pretty early on um, which top three programs you would like to to uh, attend. So you'll you'll have a list of your top three choices, and it'll prompt you as soon as you start your application. It could be that, uh, I don't know, Jessica, if you're applying for a scholarship, but it could be um, because you're not applying for a scholarship that it didn't top, top, uh, prompt you for your top three choices. Um, but I'm not totally sure on that, actually. Okay. Oh, strange. It should, should prompt you for the top three. Um, I'm not sure why it hasn't. I can look on the back end to see if I can see what's going on with your application. Claudia, what, uh, what year is your student? She is a sophomore, so she would be rising junior in high school. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect age. Mm -hmm. I assume you have but mostly sophomores and juniors coming through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even freshmen as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Has she ever gone to France before? Paris. So yes. there few days yes for just for a few days so um, oh, okay that might be much more obviously extended stay so yeah you're pretty passionate about learning French is she you mean or sorry sorry could you is she passionate about learning? <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, combination I think it's I mean she's learning French and then I think I mean I've also I've lived abroad and um so is my husband and it's just to me a wonderful experience and really kind of helps you open your eyes um to totally. something beyond you know home so um it has many different reasons and obviously speaking french and she will be entering the ib program so having a good language foundation would be really good for her so that's and she's awesome. said herself it's not just mom and dad <laughs> she's saying <it's> <laughs> <laughs> did she ask you to attend this this meeting <laughs> well no we're just looking at different programs so um okay sort of, i see kind of yeah learn a little bit of what our options are so thank yeah. you yeah i definitely encourage her to apply for a scholarship even we have the largest scholarship fund in, in for any uh study abroad high school program mm -hmm. in our field so we we award 5.4 million in scholarship but scholarships a year and our donor is really passionate about languages so a lot of our scholarship money goes to our language programs 
So yeah. um, even if financially you, you don't need a scholarship, there's still a merit scholarship that covers 10% oh. of tuition. So, oh, uh, and it looks good on, on college applications. Oh, as amazing things like that. Sure, yeah, so definitely encourage that. Thank it's a great so opportunity. Yeah. Great, appreciate that. I think you've done a good then, job answering questions. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say, Jessica, I um, I can look into this for you and uh, get back to you on that if you want to leave me your email. Uh, I can look into that for you. I have your email, <laughs> um, but yeah, I will, I will reach out to you once I have an answer for you. Any, any other questions? I'm sorry, it just, it seems really obvious, but just to confirm then departure would be similar too, right? That you would sort of depending on whether you're meeting a parent or you could still like, would she, yeah, I guess what would the travel look like? Um, would it be accompanied or she would fly separately? Or I guess, you know, if, if the, cause she, we would come in, we'd be coming from DC. So D New York's not that far. So we could certainly make that work. Um, but, um, you know, is it feasible to fly direct from DC and coordinate or tag up with, folks in, I assume, Paris, and then travel to Ren? For departure, you mean departure back to yeah, the yeah, US? Either way, yeah, oh. either way, yeah. So like if, you know, if whatever reason, you know, we're not obviously LAX or, or JFK, so um, flying out of Dallas, most likely. Um, so would she, would we be looking to coordinate or meet at in Paris at the same airport or, and then travel together to Ren or or would it be recommended that she would make her way to New York and just be with the group or and vice versa on the return then returning home with the group yeah I would I would think um the group would probably be the easiest to fly to unless I don't know if you were flying if you wanted to fly with her um but yeah we we do offer the group flight returning yeah. as well um and you said you were in dc right so again we could make the arrangements to be in new york for that flight so that's okay um but all then are the tickets then purchased through the program um that's the one thing that the tuition doesn't cover is a flight so you will purchase that on your own if you want to um take the group chaperone flight then we would you would coordinate that with your enrollment coordinator we have an okay. enrollment coordinator for each for each uh okay. territory um gotcha. and then they can help you coordinate flight flight for that chaperone group flight okay perfect okay and then i assume then that would be round trip right so for the return it would be similar okay yeah yeah okay perfect thank you yeah and yeah the, there's an enrollment coordinator throughout this whole process so they are going to be guiding you um, and answer any of these questions you, you, that you have as you go through the application process. So you, you won't be alone. <laughs> okay, great. And then I guess yeah. come the spring, is there any, do we touch base at some point just to kind of, you know, or I assume there's just information from the program around like things to pack and just, or just, you know, those kinds of basic logistics that kind of come with um, which is farther ahead of, you know, I'm thinking way out, but just, I assume, is there a point that we touch base through the coordinator or that they have an information session? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if she's opened an application just yet, but there are different tasks as you go, get further into your application process. Mm -hmm. Um, and each step as it gets closer to the date will prompt you to, you know, fill gotcha different yeah I, I can't think of exact examples right now but um it'll prompt you to fill things out or like get in touch with your coordinator as you get closer to the date of departure um and also by applying you're not uh you're not committing to anything you're just showing that you're interested so um if 
by February, you decide you can't do this, you can back out. You're not uh, mm -hmm. agreed. You're not um, committed to anything at that point. So um, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> No, that's fine. No, I was just kind of, yeah. So um, I assume that there's going to be some sort of payment made and at that point you're committing to the program and yeah. then there were some follow on information sessions or one session, yeah. whatever afterwards. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. And there's also, we also have a, a page on our website where you can book a call with enrollment coordinators. If you have any questions, you can just book a call directly through them. We also have information sessions every Wednesday at eight. Um, and that's generally for questions about our programs and um, application walkthrough, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if you had a specific question when you're a little further along into the application process and closer to departure, we have a booking site where you can book a call with, with our team. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I can leave that in the chat as well. And just There's curious, a, but you know, you have a choice, your top three. So for example, if for whatever reason she's doesn't, isn't assigned to her first choice, then I guess then that's the second one. And then you would communicate that and then we would, okay. Yes, yeah, exactly. And our bookings link. So that's the uh, informational sessions, the one, the link that I just had put in the chat. It's our informational sessions every Wednesday. And then this is our link to book a call with our team. Anything else? Any other questions you might have for REN site specifically? You know, just any um, tips for the application process? Anything to be particularly aware of or? I'm not super familiar with the thorough application process. Um, I know it does take a while. You have to submit a lot of documents, especially if they're applying for a scholarship uh, to submit tax documents, a uh, couple of uh, a teacher recommendation, um, and then a couple of essays. And then for the regular application, I think it's just filling out basic information and uh, parent parent information as well. So you'll be prompted to, to sign in with your student and answer some questions and fill out some documents. So th the sooner that you can get to it, I think the better. Great, thanks. Thank you all for coming and thanks Valentina for presenting you, on Ren. <laughs> it's beautiful. I would want to go too. <laughs> um, now I need to go. Um, yeah. for the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, thank you so much, everyone, for attending and thanks, Valentina. Thank you. Thank you. And so yeah, it, book book a call if you have any questions or attend the informational session. Our team is willing and able to help. There's a lot of us now after COVID. We're a full stacked team. So 
we're here to walk you through the process if you have any other questions or concerns. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>